Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of the first ever discovered exoplanets that actually turned out to be something a lot more exciting, but not a planet. So let's talk a little bit more about FOMOHO and welcome to What The Math. So, at a distance of about 25 light years away from us lies this beautiful star known as FOMOHO. It also has a lot of other names such as for example Gliese 881, but what you need to know about it is that it's a very well known and very very bright star, one of the brightest in the southern skies. And back in early 2000s this was also the location for what seemed to be one of the first exoplanets ever discovered. Not the first, but one of the first. Back then we didn't really have uh, many discoveries when it came to exoplanets and even though today we've confirmed over 4,000 already with at least 5,000 being confirmed as we speak, in early 2000s this number was in basically single digits. And surprisingly FOMOHO was actually really unusual in that it seemed to have been one of the first directly imaged exoplanets, basically a planet that we were actually looking at directly and seeing it with the Hubble telescope. But this is very unusual mostly because pretty much every other exoplanet since was actually really difficult to see directly. We've only managed to see them generally when they pass in front of the star and basically block the light. This is how we discovered most of these over 4000 exoplanets. So it was obviously a little bit unusual that FOMOHO was quite visible and this unusual brightness did create a lot of questions but for the most part scientists just thought that maybe it's basically surrounded by an extremely large dust cloud or even more likely some sort of an extremely large ring, similar to this unusual exoplanet known as J1407b. So what exactly is happening here and what did we just discover? Well what the scientists just discovered is actually something even weirder. And the reason it's weirder is because we've never really thought of seeing something like this. Instead of a planet, we now believe that this is actually signs of an extremely large collision. Most likely not a planetary collision though, but something similar to two extremely large asteroids or comets hitting each other face on. So in other words, what the scientists now believe is happening in this particular system is actually not a planet at all. Instead, we're looking at a collision between two really large objects that created such a huge explosion and so much debris everywhere that this is exactly what we're witnessing. Now there's actually a little bit more to this story but in a nutshell this is what the scientists recently discovered. Essentially back in 2004 when it was originally discovered the brightness was really high but as the scientists kept looking at this object throughout the years this is what seemed to have been happening. The FOMOHO B planet slowly dissipated and actually is now completely gone. And if we try to look at it today, there seems to be absolutely nothing there, which is exactly what happened when the scientists used the telescopes to try to observe at what's happening with this planet right now. Which of course in other words suggests to us that this was never a planet. This was actually signs of a really large collision that we kind of witnessed in real time and didn't really know what we were witnessing until basically literally 16 years later. And this is probably one of the coolest discoveries or rediscoveries of 2020. But why is it that we actually originally thought that this was some sort of a ring-like object or possibly a planet covered with a lot of dust? Well, once again, it's actually related to the total brightness that we were witnessing. As you can see from this particular object, most of the brightness is actually produced by the dust itself. The planet itself is not going to be producing that much brightness and instead will produce a lot of infrared light. And in this particular case, the actual visual brightness was much higher than the infrared brightness which was very unusual. It was difficult to explain but back then scientists just thought that maybe this is how planets are all going to be like especially in certain um, exoplanetary systems. And you can't really blame them because back then we didn't really know what we're going to be discovering in the next 16 years. And so now, especially because we've discovered so many other exoplanets and because we were able to actually even physically see many of them, we now know that what we were looking at originally was kind of weird and it especially did not make sense after so many other observations from other exoplanets. And what's really interesting is that a few years ago this particular planet, because it was basically one of the first discoveries, even received an official name. It was supposed to be known as Dagon, the so-called half-man half-fish god, 
which has also been popularized by the very popular H.P. Lovecraft short story by the same name. Now, all of this is kind of disappointing, I guess, simply because we now basically have to erase this planet and uh, take back its name and possibly give it to something else out there. But this is how science works. We discover things, sometimes we get it wrong, but when we do get it wrong, we usually discover something else absolutely incredible. And actually, today we're almost absolutely certain that this planet does not exist, simply because the infrared observations of this particular region revealed no planet whatsoever, they only revealed the disk that you see around the star, which does make this particular star system a little bit unusual as well. Even though it's over 400 million years old, it seems to possess this unusual ring, which to some extent does actually look like the Kuiper's Belt, but it's a lot more populated and there are obviously a lot more different things going on here, including various collisions between relatively large objects, which we've obviously witnessed. I know that currently the scientists predict that such events usually occur around every 200,000 years, so in other words we could have gotten lucky, we might need to recalculate this and possibly dramatically increase the chances of seeing another similar collision sometime in the next um, several decades. It obviously might be much smaller in proportions, but for all we know, we could discover another really unusual collision that we never really expected, simply because we've seen at least one already. Now, in terms of the actual size of these two objects, we currently speculate that they were approximately uh, 200 or so kilometers in diameter, probably around 120-130 miles. And this puts them sort of in the range of a typical relatively large asteroid in the asteroid belt, similar to this object right here, Pallas. Now, obviously, when these two objects collided, it was probably at really high velocities, and the amount of debris they created very likely shredded them apart completely. So unlike this collision that was actually really soft, the real collision very likely heated up the object so much that they left nothing but really, really tiny micrometer-sized particles that essentially resulted in what we're seeing right now, or used to see, until relatively recently. So basically, it kind of destroyed both objects, creating this really, really large, really bright cloud with practically no infrared signature um, in the middle, which means that no object ever existed there to begin with. And the current estimates for the size of this cloud right now are equivalent to about possibly two astronomical units or basically approximately 300 million kilometers across. So it's a really, really big cloud and it's very likely something that we'll unfortunately never really see again, mostly because it's kind of spread out by now. Now, we obviously don't really know if anything was left in the middle, but it's very likely that if it was, it's going to be almost impossible to find simply because of the size of the objects involved. And although originally we've always used the FOMO host system as a kind of a test ground for how we think planetary systems form and evolve over time, we now are sort of questioning this simply because of what we just observed. But obviously, there were also a few things we've learned from this observation. One of them is that it seems that these particular collisions result in an object that then escapes the star system. As we see from this particular observation, the solar pressure seems to actually push out and sort of expel the dust from the star system, suggesting that maybe signs of these collisions disappear pretty quickly in all of the different star systems, including our own. At the same time, we think that the original collision probably happened around early 2000s, maybe even 2000 uh, or 2001, and it's also very likely that we just missed it by maybe a couple of years or so. So what we're looking at right here in 2004, that's essentially the possibly year or so after the original collision that created the explosion. Or maybe even a few months after, although currently it's really difficult for us to tell by how much we've missed it. Which of course also implies that we could have witnessed that collision right as it's happening if we kind of looked at this area a little bit earlier. But you never know, we might get lucky again, we might be able to see something similar happening in the future. But unfortunately for now, that's kind of all we know. So, in a nutshell, we didn't discover a planet, and we didn't really discover anything new here other than almost witnessed a collision between two really large objects. And what we thought was a planet turned out to be just a dust cloud from a really large, really massive collision. Now, whether one day we witness something happening in real time or not is, of course, another question. And it's all a question of how many telescopes we have observed in the skies and how many new projects we have going on, similar to the famous James Webb telescope. But until James Webb becomes operational and until we start observing more of these stars, unfortunately, we're kind of left with these images from Hubble telescope 
of the really cool event we clearly missed by just a little bit. And so honestly, this is probably the coolest mistake we've ever made, thinking that this is a planet, but it's something way, way cooler. On that note, check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't shared this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. You can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye-bye.